Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Warpgate. Warpgate is brought to you by Wolf Designer. It plays two to four players, ages 14 and up, and each game takes about an hour to 90 minutes to play. Great, well come follow us through the gate. All right, the setup for Warpgate is pretty straightforward mm -hmm. and quick and easy. Yeah. One of the nice things about it is that you have these tiles. You have these hexes and these diamonds. The hexes all fit together in random configurations, right? But the neat thing about it is the number of players will determine the number of hexes. Exactly. As well as the number of diamonds, as the diamonds designate your warp gate, where you will start from. Next, you're going to take all the player boards, shuffle them up, and deal them randomly to everybody. Now, the cool thing about these player boards is that they are all different. Different alien races with different powers. Mm -hmm which makes it really unique and they're double-sided. So there's a lot of options. And even though you're given one at random, you get to pick which side to play. Now, you also are given action cards and combat cards. You're gonna take each of these decks, shuffle them separately, and put them near your player board. Next, you're gonna take the planet mission cards and the technology cards and prep them for play. Now, it's important to note that based on the number of players, we'll also change the number of cards in these decks. Each player is given 12 ships, one scientist standee, and a set of control markers, all in his color. The player then places three of his ships and the scientist marker on his warp gate. The remainder of the ships are kept in each player's supply. Each player is also given a random glory token face down. These tokens have a value of one or two on the back, but the player is not allowed to look at it until the end of the game. These tokens are exchanged during epic battles. Epic during battles. <laughs> during the course of the game. Also take a number of resource tokens and put them with the, in the easy reach. The number of tokens used are equal to the number of players plus two. These tokens are accumulated when players perform trade routes throughout the game. Lastly, choose the first player. The first player is the person who has most recently read a science fiction novel. Yep, and there's this nifty, really huge player token that's kind of cool. It looks like a warp gate. And that indicates first player and that gets moved around throughout the course of the game. All right, let's take a look at a round structure. Every round is divided into four turns, and your player board easily shows this by designating a 1x to a 4x. And these, these numbers are critical because based mm -hmm. on what you do with your action cards will determine how many things you get to do, either moving or potentially getting more ships, things of this nature. We'll look at actions in a bit, but mm -hmm. every action card is divided into two, and you have options on you every do. turn, yeah. not only on every turn, but sub-turns almost, right. because you decide which action you want to pull off. So as you're looking at your hand, and at the beginning of each round you draw a number of cards, at right. least four, and some, some races get to draw five, draw five yeah. but you will be looking at this trying to determine in which order you want to play them, because mm -hmm. as Mark was saying, the value of X on each of those cards is depends upon which turn you're playing them in. So right, exactly. one of them might say reinforce your fleet by or, or build a certain number of by ships. By a number of X. Yeah, and if on the first turn mm -hmm. you only get to build one ship right on the fourth turn you could use that same card four for ships. four ships so, which is awesome and the same thing with moving and so right. forth and it also makes a difference because you have as mark said two halves a top and a bottom yep. and the trick is you might want to play them both, both. Turn, but you don't get or to you need to save it for <laughs> yeah, later yeah. Exactly. so there's some really neat decision making going on yeah. here all right, let's take a look at some actions. So the big action is movement. Right. Because without movement, you're not going anywhere, <laughs> right? So again, placing your action card, you will get to move a certain number of spaces based on what turn it is. Mm -hmm. And the way movement works is that there's a lot of different ways to move your fleet. So you can move an entire fleet. You might move two or more ships. You might move a single ship. You might split up the fleets. There's lots of different options here for how you move ships. Now, the other thing you do is you count the empty spaces between your destination and your starting point. And you don't count the space you're on or where you're going to land. Right, and that's a little bit counterintuitive it is. at first, but you get um, uh, you clue in quickly on you that. Do. Because basically you say, I can count one, two, three empty spaces, and there's my, there's planet. my planet. That's a movement of three. Exactly, and that's also critical, right? Because you can't end up in the middle of space. Right, right. You have to be orbiting a planet at the beginning and, well, at the end of your turn. Right? And, and, correct. And some movements um, are more powerful. They'll let you go further, but you have to move only in a straight line. Oh, yes. Yeah, Those so, are great, too. So there's lots of different ways movement can work in this game and lots of different action possibilities. 
Another type of action is control. Mm -hmm. And when you play the control card, there's an X involved as well. Yeah. But what it lets you do is put down a control marker on that number of planets that your fleet are currently orbiting. Now there's two different types of control too, there's right? Yeah, there's two different types of control. And you look at your control marker and one side of it will be blank mm -hmm. and the other side of it will have a star on it. And this represents, the blank side represents outposts and the star represents colonies. Mm -hmm. So when you first put down a control marker in a sector and the sector is uh, shown by the dark double lined outline uh, on the galaxy map. Mm -hmm. um, when you first put down a control marker, you would put down just an outpost. Once you have an outpost on all of the planets in a sector, then you turn these over. They represent colonies now. now which the, is awesome. Which is awesome. <laughs> which is awesome. Because we can talk about this more in a bit. But yeah. basically, once you take control of all of the planets in a sector and, and show colonies on each of those planets, mm -hmm. you get to draw a planet mission card. And the planet mission card, well, shall we wait? No, let's go okay, into that. Let's go so into that. the neat thing about planet mission cards is that they're a color based. Yes. And But that doesn't mean the mission is going to take place on that colored planet. The missions are varied and they definitely uh, make you travel the galaxy to, to explore more planets. Exactly. So for example, let's say I took control of all the planets within a sector and mm -hmm. I flipped all my, my markers over to show that they now have colonies on those planets. Um, I can draw from the available planet mission cards. I, if any of those cards match a planet in my sector, the sector I've just taken over, I that's a candidate. I can draw one yep. of those. So let's say I just took over this sector right here with the four planets and one of them is this red planet. There's a red so there's a red uh, mission card here. Yep. What this mission card says is at the end of the game, and this is very key, yeah. is I get three victory points if at the end of the game I control a, um, a desert planet mm -hmm. and have a colony on that planet. Yeah. Now, it's very important to recognize that not uh, two people cannot control the same That's planet. That's right. Yeah, only one person. Only one person. Yeah. And, it's, and also, it's not an outpost. You have to have a colony. In this colony, case, I have to have a colony. Full-on control of right. that world. So um, it's not enough that I had it sometime during the game. This is end of the game have, scoring. At the very end of the game. So this plays a big role in... in um, as you play the game, strategizing to say, well, when do I want to take control mm -hmm. of a sector? I might say I take control of a smaller sector right. initially because then once I drop an outpost on it, I control the whole sector because yes. there's only one planet there and I flip this it over. It's definitely advantageous uh, to yeah. jumping into those right away. Right. And yeah. then I might say later, well, I need to control a planet in a sector with three mm -hmm. or more planets. Um, uh, maybe it's a yellow planet. Maybe I'll wait till the end of the game to try to, try to take control right. of that sector because there's too much that can happen between mid-game and end-game. Right. And that, that's the clever thing, too, about this game is that it forces you to explore the galaxy. You can't just stay in your little corner. No, you can't. You can't. You, to, to fulfill these missions, you're going to have to go out and explore. Now, there are other ways of getting victory points yes. in the game, and you can choose to, you know, maybe to stay in your little corner, but, but it doesn't pay off as it well. It doesn't pay off as well. Yeah. So we'll talk about other uh, movements as, or other types of actions yeah. as well. Exactly. Next type of action we're going to look at is research. Research allows you to take your scientist and move him across the galaxy to an available planet that does not have an enemy at that planet. Right. Can't be any enemy yeah. fleets there. That's right. So once you move him to a planet, then you get to look at the technology cards. And if there's any available in that color, if he lands on a red planet, you get a red technology if one is available. <laughs> So the thing about these is that they give you special powers throughout the game. Enhancing your player board that has powers as well, but just gives you more and more powers as you move across. So like for this one, for instance, it's whenever you use a build action, whenever you build another um, ship, you may place one additional ship along with it. Mm -hmm. So it's, there are really some really powerful technology things here. And I, for one, did not utilize them <laughs> as, as much as I should have. But these, there's so many powerful aspects about these cards that it's really worthwhile to invest in them. Yeah, and there's a trade-off then. As you're looking, because these are dealt face mm -hmm. up, at least in our current rules, uh, they're dealt face up. So you might look at that and say, well, I will forego moving right. my fleet out here and starting to take control of planets. And instead, I will just move my scientists out. And scientists move just like the right. ships do. They do. Um, you might say, I want to acquire certain technologies mm -hmm. because that will make me more powerful mid right. to late game. Right. 
So while you're exploring the galaxy, moving your ships and acquiring technologies, it's important to balance that with expanding your fleet. Oh, yes. Yeah, because yeah. you can find yourself stretched very thin. So there are other types of actions, including build, mm -hmm. which lets you build X number of ships at your warp gate. Yep. And if you have the right technology, it lets you build X plus one. There's also reinforcing your existing fleets mm -hmm. in areas other than your warp gate right. area, so which, which is really nice and allows you to continue to stretch across the galaxy. And this is very critical yes. for establishing trade routes. It is indeed. Because, uh, yeah. again, like you said, if you get too thin, that's a real problem. It is. People You're can really... swoop in and take your planets, yeah. and it will be very difficult to get trade routes because trade routes involve having your ships in orbit around planets that have this trade icon mm -hmm. on them. It indicates they have some sort of good that, it, that they can exchange with other planets. Now, what you have to do is have three uh, fleets over three planets with right. these icons. A minimum of three planets. A minimum of three planets yeah. that are X distance apart. Right. Now the key is this, not all planets have to be X distance apart, but you have to have this chain yes. with has all, to the, connect. all these, these planets that have your ships in orbit around them and it forms, so on their first turn for example, you'd have to have a chain where planets are one, one, one distance apart, apart hex yeah. apart. Which doesn't um, really happen. I haven't seen it happen yet. No, no. I, yeah. and, and I don't think, uh, depending upon the configuration, right. that might not be possible. Yeah. But by the fourth turn, they can be four apart. Mm -hmm. And you might have a planet with a, um, with a trade good on it, four hexes away from another planet with a trade yep. good, four planets away from another planet, with nothing in it, just your your fleet above it, right. and then another planet over here with yep. the trade goods. As long as it all connects. Yeah, as long as it all connects, and each planet in that chain is X hexes or X hexes or less right. apart, that will let you do it. And again, you don't have to control those no. those planets. Just you just have, have to have ships there. Yeah. Once you play this card, play this action, you get what is a uh, mm -hmm. this this resource marker, and it's worth two points yep. at the end of the game. Now. You can you immediately take that token, yes. so you don't have to have those planets, uh, your fleets over those right. planets at the end of the game. Because you can uh, lose these routes off and on. Oh, the easily, yeah, game. yeah. And it's a pretty interesting uh, mechanic that you like. Oh, I'm going to do this trade route now. Oh, no, I'm doing this one. Right, right. So, and so, so the, and that's a good thing because there's this balance between what we talked about before. Some of the uh, the planet mission cards mm -hmm. are end of game scoring. Yeah. Um, and it's even if you have the control of those those planets mid-game, you could easily lose them. This represents something you can do at a given point in time right. during the game, and then you've got this, and yep. nobody can take nobody these tokens can take away. away. So right. it's, it's a really yeah. nice uh, way of getting victory points. All right, now let's talk some combat. One of my favorite things in this game. <laughs> so all the action cards are kind of typically colored, right? Right. So you pretty much know when you see red that this is a battle action card. Right. And this is differentiated from the blue movement cards right. because those are basically, you can move into an area, move into a planet, and even if there's a fleet there, it's all, everybody it's shakes all hand, good. you're fine. How's it going? Yeah, everybody's cool. Yeah, so the red ones are really about combat. Yeah. And there, there's advance, concentrate, and skirmish. skirmish. Yeah. So and depending on which card you play, you might move one ship, you might move fleets from two different planets and combine them on a planet. And there's just different ways the different um, attack actions work. Now, in a battle, what's pretty fun is that you have your own combat deck. You're, make sure these are shuffled up at the start of the game. Each player is going to draw two, unless you have a special power right. to draw more. So you draw two, you look at the one that you like, they have a multiplier in the top left, yep. which is going to be a multiplier against how many ships you have in the battle. And you pick one of the two cards, and then you simultaneously You'll flip, flip them, them over and them. see who wins. Yep. Now, that's the first thing you check, the multiplier. Who wins that battle based on the ships there and the multiplier in play? Then, once you determine the winner, there's a result that you reveal mm -hmm. at the bottom of the card. And this result varies greatly. It could wipe out half the ships, you could lose your own ships, yeah. but it just it's varied in, in what it does. Right. So it's a really neat mechanic because even though you may have won the battle, you may not have won the battle. Right. Because you may have lost a bunch of ships in the process, but you did force them out. So being that you're the attacker, if you do lose the battle, you have to retreat back to the planet you came from. Mm -hmm. And if you're the defender and you lose the battle, then you have to retreat to the nearest friendly planet or unoccupied planet, right. basically, right? right? So this is a really fun dynamic ability in this or mechanism in this game for you to battle each other back and forth, and it really swings back and forth between who can push and pull on those planets. It, it does, and there's definitely a benefit to you moving more 
uh, ships into a fleet around a planet before Absolutely. you do combat. And like the concentrate where you're pulling in from two oh, yeah. it's yeah. so powerful. So you might hang on to certain cards mm -hmm. uh, because you know you want to engage in battle later on right. uh, in, a, in a round and you wait for it to be a 4x instead of a 1x. But the uh, the trade-off is sometimes it's okay if you lose. In fact, there's one that says uh, getting glory tokens. Right. Uh, it's kind of the Klingon good day to yeah, die right. sort of thing. <laughs> Um, what it does is even if you if you're the attacker, even if you lose, you still get one of these glory tokens. Yeah. Now these glory tokens are worth one or two mm -hmm. at the end of the game, but, but you don't know. You don't know until the end of the game. Correct. So, so you could potentially steal from the other player. Correct. All right. There are several game-ending triggers. Mm -hmm. So if the planet mission cards run out, there's only two left. So the deck runs. The out. deck runs yeah. out on the on the board on the table, or the technology deck also runs out in a similar fashion, then that will trigger in game. Now, you will also trigger in game if you run out of these commodity tokens. Commodity tokens. And if you run out of control tokens, mm -hmm. you also end the game. Now, the way the game ends though, is that you finish that current round and then you do one more full round before you tally points and see who the winner is. Now, tallying points is pretty simple. Mission cards yeah. that you have completed Correct. are worth three. All your technology cards are worth one, and if you have glory tokens, whatever their value says, and of course commodity tokens are worth two. You tally your points and see who the winner is. Right. Hey folks, just a reminder, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here is in prototype form. With that said, even some of the action cards that we've shown in this video have already changed to some degree. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye on the campaign for more updates. And this is because they are continuing to play test the game mm -hmm. and find things that are need a little bit rebalancing, but yeah. they're continuing to make improvements over time. Yeah, and we played this game several times and I really I think I, I really do enjoy all the different things that you can do in this game. There's so many possible paths and paths to victory, which have worked out pretty nice. Right, and I, I like the fact there is a uh, trade-off between your your early versus late game strategies, and mm -hmm. also even within a round, you're looking at all your possible actions uh, and the cards that have the upper and lower parts, right. and you're trying to determine in which order do or I really need to play place. them. So it's not just a question of uh, anticipating your opponents, but it's also, look, I know what I can do rounds one through four, what is the right sequence? Yeah, there's some decent planning up front. Yeah, there definitely is. I yeah. like games with planning. I know you yeah, do. So. <laughs> I also thought it was fascinating the way that the board uh, can be reconfigured oh, yeah. for two, three, and four players just by moving the hexes some and these lots diamonds. Lots of replayability. There, there is, and and we some things we noticed as we were playing. The fact is, you can recreate uh, the board or configure the board so that some sectors have absolutely no planets, and or uh, some sectors have a lot, right. which will change the way you approach the game. Exactly. So, folks, if this looks like a game that might be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it from us. And until next time, we'll, we'll see you at the, the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.